one point that for me was uh, was very interesting. You said about the cognitive uh, bias, but you said on the Western world. So, yeah. Yeah. what yeah. is the role <clears throat> of culture? Yeah. I'm saying different oh, oh, certainly, yeah. different societies yeah, 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 yeah. in the yeah. way people yeah. innovate yeah. and, yeah. for example, large companies operating globally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. maybe yeah. the solution yeah. that fits in Switzerland for sure. may yeah. not fit right. in for sure. China. Right. For sure. Right. So yeah. and, what and, is your would be? Yeah. And, and I don't know. I mean, again, when we look at the when we look at the when we look at when we look at um, uh, the the field of, of essentially cultural psychology. How th there are different kind of schema that different nationalities bring to literally how they see the world. So there's some famous work from a guy named Richard Nisbet at the University of Michigan, where he took. So I'm going to use Americans as the quintessential example of the West, and I'm going to use uh, Japanese as a quintessential example of the, of the East. And so even literally how how they see the world. Um, so you show. So Nisbet did some work where he would show uh, an aquarium to a group of America to Americans, and then he would show it to Japanese. So, and the aquarium happened to have a very, you know, like a single, a lot of fish, but a single large fish. And so what do the Americans see? They say, I see a giant goldfish right, right there. What do the Japanese see? Describe the scene. Oh, I see some plants in the background as part of the, and so you have a greater move toward context and a greater move toward basically background and foreground. Uh, you see it in the work of Michelle Gelfand, who talks about certain cultures, and it goes directly to explore and exploit. Mm -hmm. Certain cultures being tight and certain cultures being loose. Certain cultures being very, very heavily rule-based. Certain cultures being less rule-based, more norm-based, more, more value-based. One isn't better than the other. Yeah. It's simply different ways, different ways of doing things. And so I think what we need in, to me, the very best innovators are people who are multis. Okay, it, it, multi in any in any sense, multicultural. And by cultural, I don't even mean east and west. I mean yeah. I understand tight cultures. <clears throat> I understand yeah. loose cultures. I see the background. I see the foreground. Um, I know that personality matters. I also know that context matters. And then it goes into, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that always amazes me being in a place like Finland as an American, is how many people are multilingual in a way that they are not in. Yeah. Yeah. The United States, and so it's really just a matter of. Mul I think that the key attribute at the personal level is multiness. Yeah. Like Alex, you know, he's Swiss, but you know, you, you talk to Alex, he's like, okay, where is this dude from? <laughs> you know, and he's like, well, he's from everywhere. Um, and and that's, I think, that's how you want. I think that's that's what we're. I think that's what we want at the at the individual level. Yeah. The yeah. ability to, to to be multi, to move from across boundaries, to understand different yeah. contexts, and not say. Yeah. How can you possibly describe that aquarium that way? Yeah. That's wrong. Yeah. One isn't wrong yeah. in the same way that it's not better to be an explorer or yeah. an exploiter. Yeah. They're both good. Yeah. We just have to understand yeah. they operate by a different yeah. set of rules. Yeah. I think that's interesting because the challenge is actually very similar across the globe. When you become mm -hmm. an established company, yeah. your challenge is to reinvent yourself. But how you're going to respond to that, there's not one single answer. So if you look at Amazon, they don't, they actually do a lot of internal innovation, a lot of internal experiments, and they don't do a lot of acquisitions. You know, now they made some big ones, of yeah. course, right? That's very different from a Tencent or Alibaba yeah. that invest in hundreds of startups. Mm -hmm. So it's a different response to the same kind of challenge that you need to explore, right? So we know what kind of actions can be taken, but it's a mix of actions. It's about inventing, it's about exploring, it's yeah. about acquiring, it's about investing. So I think what we need to get a little bit better at is using the full spectrum. And in some cultures, one spectrum will tend towards this side, yeah. where more context, and in another spectrum, more you know, the foreground. So I think we're getting a lot more professional in how to respond to this challenge of exploration, which is actually very similar. Once you're an established company, you have to reinvent yourself because the world is changing. But you will react differently in Japan, in uh, China or in the U.S. or in, in Finland, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, uh, my, my final question is uh, about going back to this discussion on people. I think that we are uh, raising a new generation mm -hmm. that is absolutely ready to explore. I'm mm -hmm. saying for my family, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. The, the young generation, but what happens with, I would say, this middle, you know, yeah. someone yeah. that it's not at the end of the career, but it's not young. And this, yeah. these people that were raised yeah. with the full 
concept of exploitation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. need to increase, have yeah. control, yeah. Yeah. and that, yeah, yeah. and suddenly yeah. the, the world is shifting to say, oh God, yeah. Yeah. what I was expecting it to last 20 years, it's, yeah. it's yeah. only lasting two. Yeah. So what would be the message? Because this is still yeah. an absolutely massive part of our workforce, yeah. Yeah. and not yeah. only yeah. in companies, in the governments and everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So what would be our our advice and what would be your support for the leaders of these companies to mm -hmm. to hold on this I would say frozen middle yeah. you yeah. know these yeah. people there that's a what hard question I'll give yeah. that one to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a really hard I thing. think it's a I think it's a brilliant question actually and I think it's a I think it's an enormously important question uh, let me offer two responses to that one of them was something we haven't talked about yet but is I think both sort of undergirds a lot of what Alex is saying and also rises on top of it which is that and, and we heard about it in some of the remarks today, is you can't get any of this done without uh, a context, uh, an atmosphere of psychological safety. Yep. And I think that what those folks are looking for, the people you're talking about in that middle, is they feel extraordinarily psychologically unsafe. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and so when people feel Absolutely. unsafe, yeah. they narrow their focus, yeah. Yeah. they reduce yeah. their risk. And so it's, yeah. it's, it's a cultural problem in organizations of increasing yeah. psychological safety, particularly for that group. The yeah. second thing I think is programmatic, and I think it's a huge opportunity yeah. for firms all over the world, uh, which is this. When we think about, um, you know, we have a very, very large cohort of people who are in, in the workplace, who are in their 50s and 60s, mm -hmm. who still have literally decades of yeah. good work left in them, uh, who have no intention of retiring, and yet the pathways for them yeah. are not great because only one person gets to be CEO. Yeah. And I think what the, the opportunity here is for something that we haven't done yet in organizations, which is mid-career mentoring. Yeah. We do mentoring for people at the beginning of their yes. careers. We do yeah. no mid-career mentoring. Yeah. And I think that that, remain, that that is a massive opportunity for firms, yeah. is to establish mentors for people in mid-career and yeah. say, what yeah. does, you're 50 years old, what does the next 15 or 20 years of your yeah. work life yeah. look like? Yeah. And let me give you some some pathways some yeah. pathways to it. And I think the combination of psychological safety, which is atmospheric environmental yeah. and mid-career mentoring, which is m mentoring, which is much more programmatic, yeah. um, is a is a really, really powerful combination. Yeah. yeah. I think the, you know the next step even to go further is maybe we need completely different organizational structures. Could be, yeah. So there's not that just the way through. up, yeah. right? Yeah. But yeah. that we have yeah. you know project <laughs> organization, exactly. things exactly. coming and going. Yeah. And I do think that a lot of the organizations that are, you know, they've been around to take WL Gore, right? They've always had new yeah, ways of organizing. Right, right. There is a CEO, but you know, there's no titles. Right, <laughs> there's yeah. maybe three titles in right. the company. So they right. continuously change and they create almost like an internal job market yeah. where people feel that safety and they move around. Obviously right. it does create challenges because you know, you don't want to be too laid back because otherwise people are just gonna, you know, hang out and you're still a company, you need to create value. So you need to find that right organizational structure Absolutely. so people stay motivated right. because they want new challenges and the new challenges are not always related to going up in the hierarchy. So Roger Martin, number one business thinker of the world, talks about that a lot, that maybe today we need to find new ways I, of rewarding people absolutely. and saying it's not just the hierarchy yeah. up, absolutely. but it's more challenging projects. Absolutely, right? yeah. absolutely. And that's, that's partly, it's, it's structural. It's also just being a little bit more inventive on yeah what job what jobs are yeah. what what yeah. job what 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 jobs jo jobs exist. and some tech firms yeah. do this already yeah. you know where you have you know someone who's an extremely accomplished yeah. say uh, bench scientist who doesn't want to become yeah. a she doesn't want to become a, a manager yes. so we make her a senior scientist yeah. Yeah. or some some companies have yeah. fellows or things like that so again it, let's go back to this idea of psychological safety at the yeah. cohort that you're talking about yeah. people feel psychologically unsafe mm. The people you're talking about feel psychologically unsafe because they're 50 years old and they don't see a path. Yeah. It's like getting up. They and see it, a wall. Well, they, they don't. They, they see darkness. Yeah. They, it's, yeah. it's like getting up in the middle of the night yeah. and there's no light in front of you. You can only see this far ahead. Yeah. And so if you sh if shine a light on that and show people alternative paths and bring in that mentor as a guide, yeah. then I think you have a real opportunity to reap some incredible talent there. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you said it before, right? That we need to use that talent because there's a lot of knowledge, right? And that comes back to experimenting, you know, not just exploration around business ideas, 
I think the next big wave is going to be about management innovation. Now, this is nothing new, right? No. Gary Hamill has yeah. been talking about yeah. this for a long time. And, but, but I think that is becoming a lot more relevant because we're seeing these crazy challenges, right? One is internal workforce. The other is the youth. The other is the environment, the society. So without some kind of organizational innovation, new ways of organizing, I think we're not going to be able to tackle these challenges, yes. right? So, so there is something going on brewing. I think we're not quite there yet. Some organizations have done it. Gore I mean, has been around for a long time, and they're not small. It's 12,000 people or more, and they're trying this, right? So I think there is this kind of phase where we might see more of that happening in established companies. Look, thank you. Thank you both. Wonderful talk. Thank you for your time before My your, yeah. your talk. Thank you, Ricardo. Yeah. Looking forward Cheers. to see you both on the yeah. stage.